Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about how to avoid dementia, okay, or Alzheimer's. Have you ever counter or have you ever encounter uh, relatives or friends who actually have dementia? If yes, give me a comment below. And do you know we have uh, ways to avoid that or to reduce that dementia? So today we really have the privilege uh, to interview Dr. Michel Gagné, remember him? He talked about the joy of stress in my past videos. He talked about happiness. He talked uh, he talked about uh, ways to reduce stress. Or stress is a kind of uh, positive stress that can improve our performance. He also talked about breathing exercise. He is a breathing exercise or breathing specialist. So today, we are going to interview him. Are you excited? So stay tuned, okay? Stay tuned. I'm going to invite him now online. Okay, good morning, Master Sarah. How are you? <laughs> good morning. How are you? I'm always fine. Good, good. So how's uh, Mirabel? Well, Mirabel, spring is coming. Now I've been out yesterday. Yeah, my trees are starting, you know, sprouting, the leaves are coming. My son planted potatoes, making himself a small garden. So he's enjoying, he's already planted an onion that has started sprouting. Yesterday he planted potatoes. So we are preparing and my son has been quarantined because coming back from school, he come back in, in a bus and one of the kids in the bus was diagnosed with COVID. So my son has been quarantined for 14 days. But the problem about COVID, I don't know what it is in Toronto. I know Toronto, you are in alarm stage. It's incredible. So here it's quite okay. We're in the countryside, so it's no big deal. But we have to protect ourselves. Even if COVID is not a killer, COVID don't kill. It's other things that kill people. But anyway, we're not here to talk about COVID. We're <laughs> here to talk about dementia. And dementia is a disease of the 21st century. And it's a disease of the Western world. I spent the last 30 years in Asia and nobody talk about dementia in Asia. Oh. Because most old people are actively living. The problem that I discovered since I'm back in Canada, the Western world have created the concept of ageism. I've made getting old after 65 a disease. To be old is becoming a, a disease. It's a business of disease. And, and because of this, the tendency is to consider old people as sick people. Wit make them sick. And that's what uh, dementia is all about. Just last year, over 3 million Americans have been diagnosed as dementia. And of course, many times, and then you can bring the slides, I can slowly talk about it. And it's sometimes confused with Alzheimer. Alzheimer is dementia, but dementia is not Alzheimer. So Alzheimer is a degenerative disease. So it, it, it increases as the time goes on and people will eventually die of Alzheimer. But people might not die of dementia. The only problem is they get crazy because it's affecting them. And we're going to see, I've identified symptoms of dementia and some kind of coping strategy. How can we help people who are so showing sign of dementia? And if you go back to the slide, then I can introduce the different category of trouble that people diagnosed with dementia are facing and how we can help them coping with it. Because many people have dementia, but they can live on a daily, but they need a different strategy. As they age, old people have a tendency to live in the present. They don't live for the future anymore. They live on a day by day thing. Well, when you're young, you plan the next three years, five years, you plan your summer holiday, you're looking at meeting friends, and you're at, your brain is differently active. Old people, cognitive function decrease with age. And this is the problem of dementia. It's a cognitive situation. It has become a psychological issue. But the problem to live, if we forget the psychological issue, to live is to live, is to breathe by the nose and eat by the mouth. It's 30,000 times a day. And dementia can be prevented if we stop making them aware that they don't remember this and don't remember that and stuff like that. So it's the surrounding that doesn't help them. What I like about Asia, 
old people are part of the family. You don't put your old people in old people house. You live with them. The problem of the Western world, we put them in, in old people house. My father died of dementia. And the moment they diagnose him, my, my elder sister took control legally. They have created a system when you declare a dementia, senile, you lose all your legal right. You cannot control your banking. You cannot control anything. So suddenly somebody take control of your life. And this is what has killed my father. He lost his right of driving a car. He, he could not make a loan at the bank. My sister was doing all this for him, but my sister was not living with him. And he became trapped alone in his house. Without, when he was not diagnosed, he was living on a daily basis. And the neighbors were helping him. Like right now, my neighbor in front was a friend of my father. She's 84 years old. She is not senile, but she knew that she is not as she was 50. So naturally, she relate with us. We talk with her and people are helping each other. We, we live like in a small kampung, a small village. And this is what I notice in Asia. Old people are never alone. But in the modern world, we put people in old people house. When they put my father in a old people house, he had a small room to himself. Instead of having his land, he had trees, he had garden and everything. And suddenly his life was in a small bedroom. And I told my sister, what have you done to your father? But he, he, he has dementia. He doesn't remember where he put his key. He loses his wallet. He, but that's not a big deal. Let him live. Living is living in his own thing. People need their thing. And what I notice is many people have nothing from their youth, their childhood. How can they remember things? We remove all the things of their life. So, as I said, Alzheimer disease is not dementia. But dementia include Alzheimer because Alzheimer people look like dementia, but it is degenerative. Dementia is not. And they have unique set of symptoms. So we're going to look at some of the symptoms. Next slide, please. Okay. One loss. thing is short-term loss of memory. Uh, they have also other factor loss of memory. One of my friend, his mother is above 85 years old. And my friend is always yelling at her, but she don't remember what she did this morning. She don't remember that she brushed her teeth. They have short-term loss of memory, and sometimes they don't remember what they did one hour ago. And actually, this makes them very upset when people remind them, why are you doing this? You just did it. We don't have to yell at them. We have to understand. Short-term loss of memory, short-term. They don't remember what happened yesterday. They don't remember what they did this morning. That's it. We have to live with this, and we have to help them. But sometimes these people will remember when they were five years old. And me, I like talking with the, the, the mother of my friend. She's old, but she talked about when she was young, living in the countryside on the farm and everything. She remembered the animals and everything. And she's so happy when you let her talk about when she was five years old. But my friend get pissed off. He says she's always talking about things we don't even know. It was before we were born. I say, but this is what she remember. And she's very entertaining. She knew things that don't are not written in history book. Old people have memories of time that is long time gone. But why don't we spend the time to listen to them? We are more concerned with daily things. Did you remember yesterday you went shopping? No, they don't remember. Who cares? Do you remember? You remember. Why you want them to remember what you remember? If you remember it, stop worrying why they don't remember it. It's no big deal. They forgot what they done at 8 o'clock this morning. So big deal. And yeah, it's not so important. Short-term so memory is one of the issue, and we have to live with it. It is no big deal. If we are around them, we know what they've done earlier. So we can remember. Don't do this. You just did it. They didn't remember. They just did it. We, we remember. Let's help them. So they need our presence. They don't need us to be sarcastic with them. They don't need us to tell them, hey, stupid, you have no memory. It makes them angry. Then it becomes an emotional problem. Then it becomes a psychological issue. So we have to understand where they are. And when they start talking about when they were children, when they were going to school, elementary, we have to entertain them. We have to listen to them. This is what they remember. So it's like they're opening a chapter in their life library that they remember. And that's why that sometimes it is so surprising. How can they remember something that happened 80 years ago? Because this is what memory is all about. Long-term memory they have, 
the only problem is mostly short-term memory. This is one of the issue. And me, I told people who live with people who are showing short-term loss of memory, be patient, be the short-term memory that they have lost. And instead of us getting angry at them not remembering, we have to understand that's it. But also we have to be attentive and we have to be good listener when they start talking or when they were young, what happened when they were 12 years old. If the, the lady start talking about when she was married, the day of her wedding, how she was just before going to the church and everything. We have to listen to that we, because this is what they remember and they're very passionate about what they remember. But my friend get impatient, you see, she's always uh, constantly remembering things that we already know. So what? That's what she remember. Be attentive. Unless they, I, they isolate themselves. They don't want to talk to you. You never listen to them. So we have to be attentive. Even if they told us that many times, why not listening to it another time? That's no big deal. I don't know if you like movie. I like movie. And sometimes I like to watch the same movie 10 times. So old people are like this. Sometimes they repeat the same story. It's an old story. We heard it many times, but we have to hear it again. At least they feel that they are still living with us. We still are in communication with them. We don't isolate them and they don't isolate themselves. Move to the next slide. Okay, trouble <laughs> communicating. So, of course, sometimes they have difficulty to find the words. The word don't come. And, and, and they, they're trapped. They, it's like I have it in my mind, but my mouth cannot say it. So they don't find the words. And sometimes the problem is people finish the phrase for them. People are impatient. As they are looking for the word, we have to understand. It's not because they're not intelligent. It is because in the nervous system, they are synapses disconnection. So it doesn't connect with these memories. And that's it. We have to live with it. So sometimes they talk about something, but they cannot finish their phrases because they miss the word. But in their mind, it is clear. It is just the wording that is missing. And we have to accept that. That is no big deal. And one example of this, uh, I don't want to make politic, but uh, the president of U.S., Mr. Biden, have you watched him doing speech? Yes, and yes. But, he's yeah, talking to us. He doesn't know what he's saying. He yeah. is suffering from dementia. He's a brilliant, he's the president of the United States. But in many of his speech, he suddenly lost. And that's why when the press asked him question, it's all rehearsed. He has pages. Question from the press is already written. And his answer are written by somebody, a secretary. He can read. But if you ask him to remember, sometimes he, oh, blah, blah, but he doesn't know what to say. And, and he looks stupid. There's so many videos right now running on social media by Biden looking a fool of himself. Give him a break. How old is the man? And he has the right to have some problem finding some words. He's been in politics for all long. So he has a long history. But sometimes it's the short memory of something that is a fact of yesterday. And he doesn't recall it and that's it. And sometimes he want to say something, but the words are not coming. And the worst is they have difficulty to recognize faces. They see people and they say, who are you? I know my sister, my elder sister had a problem with my father. She say, I go there, he doesn't recognize me. But I say, have you looked at yourself in the mirror lately? You are so different than when you were 30 years old. Your face has changed. You change your hair. He doesn't recognize you. What's the problem? Plus they have <laughs> eyesight situation. But he say, he doesn't remember my name. So what's the problem? He doesn't want to talk to you. Do you understand? He doesn't remember your face. No big deal. But when I went to see my father, my son was three years old. And how come you remember my son? But he doesn't remember my elder sister. I told her, you remember my young son, three years old? He saw him three times. But he doesn't remember you. He saw you all his bloody life. And for her, it was like, you know, he has problem. He doesn't have problem. You have a problem to accept that he doesn't recognize your face. I never had that problem. I come back to see him twice a year, and he always remember me. I say, you are here close to him. He doesn't remember you. Me, I live in Asia, and I come back twice a year, and he always remember me. Why? 
It's your problem, not their problem. They cannot connect faces with name. That's okay. No big deal. Next slide. And communicating, we have to help them. Confusion, of course, they can get confused about a lot of things. What day is today? Is it morning, afternoon, or night? Night, of course, it's dark. But morning, is it Monday, Sunday, or Tuesday? They don't know. And they get confused. How to do things. Uh, did I did my shopping? Did I did not? When they want to do things, they don't remember where things are. And big, big problem for them. And this also, how we can help them reduce the confusion is by helping them to get organized. What is their daily thing? We have to get sure that it is always well placed. And sometimes it looks like a little bit, you know, compulsive disorder. They become very obsessive. For one reason, they know they don't, they get confused. How to reduce confusion is to get them organized. And sometimes we have to help them to organize themselves. Sometimes my neighbor, the lady that is on the other side, that you now is 84 years old, was coming to visit my father. And her first thing she was doing, going into the fridge, looking at the food in the fridge. And she realized that sometimes the food was there for too long and already it was rotten. But my pop, my father they didn't realize this. For him, he had food in the fridge. But when she come, she knew already. If, the, if you see the food that is rotten, don't tell him. Just throw it away. That's it. So stop judging them, understand the reality, they're confused. That's it. Next slide. Yeah, it's not easy. Most people will judge them. Yes. Moodiness. Of course, because of all these kind of things, they know they don't recognize names and faces. We don't need to tell them they know. And they became very moody with themselves, very angry. And sometimes because of this, they prefer not to see people. If I don't remember the name of the face I see, why should I meet them? So we have to help them to prevent this bipolar. Bipolar naturally is happy, sad, happy, sad, happy, sad. Of course, my father became very moody when my mother died. My mother was the organization behind my father. And when he lived all your life with one woman, and we just saw a few days ago, Queen Elizabeth, burying her husband of 70 years. How do you think she is right now? That lady lived with him, know him, she's 17 years old, all her life with that man. 70 years, suddenly gone. Are we concerned with how moody the Queen Elizabeth can be today? We have to understand she's 95 years old this week. Yeah. We have to understand, you know, She's alone. She's been living with the same man for 70 years. Can we accept it's okay that one day she'll be high and one day she'll be down? We don't need to remember them that. We need to bring joy and happiness in their day. We need to help them remembering the good moment. It's time to share and to live memories. And they have memories of incredible things. And it's time to make them talking about it. So moodiness is one of the elements that is the worst for dementia people, they isolate themselves. That's why when I went to visit my father in this retirement home they put him, he was always in his small room alone. My father always being a big mouth talking, yak, yak, yak with everybody. He was always going to the garage with the friend, playing golf with the friend. And suddenly because difficulty of recognizing, not being organized and stuff like that, he isolated and now they isolated him on purpose. The only thing they scheduled is meals. And they schedule when he has to take a bath. So suddenly they treat him like a baby. He's not a baby, 85 years old. Give me a break. He knows he's not a baby. But if you treat him like a baby, what do you think he feels? He's moody. He gets aggressive. He gets angry. And they say, your father is bad temper. My father is not bad temper. Stop treating him like a baby. Treat him like a mature old man who is not 100% functional connectively. But he's still an 85-year-old man. And that's the problem of why them why they withdraw from society and the problem that I discovered in Quebec. What do we do with the old people? We put them in old people house like my father. And they all isolated in their small room. Of course they say, oh, but we take care of them. Yeah, but you don't help them to take care of themselves. They still function. They can still walk. They can still talk. They can still move. But we treat them like they are not able to take care of themselves. 
Next slide. Inability to understand sarcasm. So suddenly, that's a problem. Are you making a joke or are you serious? They cannot see the difference. They cannot see the difference. What's the issue? And we have to understand that because of this also, they retreat, they isolate. Because they're not sure, are you joking at me or you're serious? They cannot see the difference. So they become very concrete. They live in the present. Concrete is concrete. So what they have, you know, I have a toothbrush, I have a toothbrush. Don't ask me, what are you doing with the toothbrush to your computer? I'm not saying I have a toothbrush at my computer. Why? Because sometimes I will be 12 hours on my computer, but I have water next to me and sometimes I feel I want to brush my teeth. Of course, the people told me, I said, why you have a toothbrush to your computer? I said, do you brush your teeth? You go toilet me, I'm in a wheelchair and it's more convenient if I have it here. So don't tell me I'm dementia or don't make a joke because I have a toothbrush. I also have a pen. Do you have a problem with this? I have both a pen and a toothbrush. Of course, I know that the pen is for writing in a toothbrush or so brushing my teeth. But sometimes they will be confused. Are you joking or are you serious? And because of that, we have to be care. They are very sensitive. So we have to be serious about when we talk to them, be careful what you tell them. Uh, don't tell my father he forgot to zip his fly of his pants. You just have to. Tell him quietly, not publicly, not embarrass him publicly. Already putting his pen correctly is not easy. And sometimes putting his T-shirt upside down. Is it a big deal? He wears his T-shirt, but he put it upside down. So what's the problem? Don't make a joke about it. Just tell him, take off your T-shirt, turn it the other side, and that's it. Don't make sarcasm about it. Don't make joke about it. They are very easily offended. And that's why sometimes as they grow older, they start behaving like childlike again. Well, I've learned this from Tibetan Buddhism. 88 years a cycle of life. And at 88 years, you become like a baby again. And Buddhism in Tibet, they respect very much the elder and they take care of them. All people must be taken care of like a baby. Why? Because they are completed a total cycle of life and now they are moving in. And now we have more and more people reaching 80 plus years old. So we're going to have more and more people getting in that state of mind. But we have to stop labeling them as sick. They are not sick. It is based part of what it is to get old. The brain function, the cognitive function are not as sharp as when we are 35 years old. But we live in a world that wants to be logical all the time. And now imagine with the world of artificial intelligence, and computer they are completely lost in this world and of course simple tasks be difficult for them next slide inability to perform simple tasks and of course old people are sometimes put in all kind of medication and of course they don't know have i taken my six o'clock pill my 10 o'clock pill uh, my monday pill or my friday pill normally doctor will give them a plastic casing day by day which pill to take at what time we have to help them to get organized because these are simple things, but they are unable to perform it. And one, one of the terrible tasks in life is put your laces on your shoes. This we learned to do when we were one, two years old. But when they reach sometime 84, 85, they cannot attach their laces anymore. So should we give them shoes like this or should we give them shoes without laces? Because these simple tasks become very complicated with them. First, their finger is not as mobile as they were when they were younger. Things are different. So we have to understand, we have to help them. Uh, Sometimes wearing a belt look like simple, wear a belt, put it here and put it there. But for them to, to, wear, to attach a belt is very complicated. Get them pent with a good rubber band. No belt to attach. So at least their pants won't fall down. So we have to help them when they go shopping. You cannot buy the same clothes. Why? Because you cannot attach your belt. Or give them, like my, my, my grandfather, when I was living in the countryside as a kid, he had suspender. So I don't have to worry about attaching my belt. I just put my suspender. That's it. So we have to understand that 
simple tasks become complex for them. Uh, can you imagine when you're a man shaving? They've been shaving themselves for 60 years and suddenly shaving become a complex task. Difficult for them. And sometimes we have to understand electric razor make life easy. So stop telling them, how come you cannot shave yourself? Buy them an electric shaver. That's it. They, they, at least they'll be able to push the electric button to start off, start off, and that's it. And at least they'll be able to shave themselves instead of laughing at them, doing sarcasm with them. So simple task we can ask them. And sometimes simple task. Move to the next one. Next slide. Repetition. Repetitive things become difficult. Sometimes they will do the same thing over and over without realizing they've already done it three times. Stop yeah. telling them you just did that. For them, right now, I'm doing this. What I did 10 minutes ago has nothing to do with right now. Right now is right now. They live in the present. They don't recall what happened an hour ago. They live in the present. In the present, they do what they do, and that's it. So let's accept that they repeat the thing. And if it's cooking the egg for the third time, well, we have to tell them, you have eaten enough egg. Don't tell them, hey, stupid, you did it three times. No, 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 no. We have to tell them, would you like to eat something else? Stop highlighting the mistake they do. We have to understand that they become repetitive. They will repeat the same task. Good and point. of course, my neighbor, the lady on the other side at 84, she is a maniac of cleaning the house. So she will clean the house sometimes five times a week. But you have to remember her sometime. Uh, why you go to, uh, oh, I have to clean my floor. But you told me you did it yesterday. Oh, you just did it this morning. Why you go it again? We have just to make them aware you already did this. So come with me, do something else. We have to take care. We have to live with them. That's what I love about Asia. You don't put your whole people in the parking lot. You live with them. You involve them in the kitchen. Even if they do mistake, they spoil this and that, you still live with them. Here we isolate them. We should not. We should live with them. Okay, next one. Lost of interest. Of course, when you have all these problems, do you think you are interested to live? Do you think you are interested to go in public? Even worse now with the mask and with the COVID, do you think they are interested to go into people? So they are not interested in seeing people. Because it's getting complicated. And sometimes they are only with people like them who have the similar problem. Uh, my father used to play golf. He liked to play golf. But he started to lose some of his friends who died. So when he used to go play golf with the same guy, suddenly two out of four disappear. So he lost the interest of playing golf with strangers. Because he don't know who are these people and he prefer. They become very moody. They don't understand him and everything. So loss of interest is terrible. They, they, they withdraw from society. In Quebec, no need. Society withdraw, take them out of society. In Quebec, CHSLD, you know, these old people are out. We take them out. And now they lost interest in living. Their life is just uh, follow the schedule of the old people house. You take breakfast when they want, not when you want. You take lunch when they want, not what you want. You take a bath when they want, not what you want. And you eat what they cook you, not what you want to eat. So how do you expect them to be interested in living? You have killed all the pleasure of living, which is improvising on a daily basis. New thing, experimenting, living, redoing thing, making mistakes, having fun, joking, laughing. Why not? And that's what I love, Asia mentality expanded family concept. Old people are never alone. And young children are always with the old people. Now with COVID, we don't want the child to be close to the elder. Grandparents have been waiting for one year to see their grandchildren. This is terrible where right now. Are we increasing dementia with COVID? And of course, we say old people die of COVID. Are they dying of COVID or they just died of loss of interest of living? It is just suicidal in disguise. Of course, we don't research that. It's easy right now to label every old people who die COVID. But me, I say loss of interest. 
That's why my neighbor on the other side, I know her since I'm 13 years old. Now my son is 13. So I ask my son to come to go to help her once in a while. And I told him, she will teach you a lot of things like she teach me a lot of things when I met her when I was young. Me, I know her for a long, long, long time. We should not leave her alone because she's an old lady. Of course, a guy like me, what would be my interest for an 85-year-old lady? Nothing to do with interest. It's about respecting the person, the human being behind. And normally we have a tendency to tell children, don't disturb the old people. Contrary, old people need young children because they have a lot of story to tell, a lot of life to share. And this is what you should do. Uh, years ago, I went to Sweden. Sweden, when they have old people house, next to the old people house, there is a kindergarten. Because the old people, what do you think they do when they have nothing to do? They go and play with the children. They are patient. Who have the time and attention for young children? Old people. We should bridge old people with very young children. They have the time. They are patient. And they are slow also. They make mistakes. You know, just attaching your laces. Young children are learning to do it. Old people have difficulty to do it. They're going to have fun doing it together. I love Sweden attitude years ago about this. Putting an old people house next to a kindergarten. So that when the old people have nothing to do, they just hang out with the young children. And the young children experience living with old people. Which is great. Why not? Next one. Falling. falling, that's a big issue. Of course, they don't have the same balance as they had when they were young. Well, you were a Taekwondo athlete. You still have the same balance as 20 years old. Or you have to be careful sometimes. I'm talking to you, Master Sarah Chong. I remember when I was 50-something, I used to be a ballet dancer. I could do <laughs> spinning and anything. I was a gymnast. I could do backflip. Do you think at my age, 71, I can still do the same? Yeah, but I'm going to kill myself. Because my balance, balance is in the eardrum. So my balance is not the same. And of course, we have to be careful. And now even I'm handicapped. I'm learning to walk with one leg. And of course, falling has been an issue. I have to prevent. It happened to me. I, I fell three times. And of course, we told people, we provide them a device to help them walking. But we have to understand, falling is an issue. We have to teach them how to prevent falling. And if they fall, how to fall not injuring yourself so we have to help them falling is a skill like anything and of course in martial art you learn how to fall in judo you know how to fall in gymnastic you know how to fall because falling is part of the activity but old people that spend their whole life walking on two legs suddenly balance disappear just going toilet sitting on the toilet bowl become a difficult task why because they don't have the same balance the legs are not strong as they were before going down the stairs they used to run doing down the stairs. Suddenly, they have to think step by step. And of course, how to help them if they fall. Now there is more and more technology that they can carry with them. If you fall, you push a button that will be connect to the police department or connect with your neighbor phone or something like that. So if they fall, don't try to wake up to, to stand up by yourself. Call for help. And now we have device, mobile phone voice recognition device that exists on the market and if we have a gift to give them for their birthday is a gift like this if you fall i always have this on you and this way if they fall no big deal you fall it's normal you are don't have the same balance as you were young you're aging and that's it you know losing balance is the same thing i used to be like i told you a ballet dancer you used to be a taekwondo athlete we were able to do things that today I just dream of doing, but I will not dare to put my body risking it because I know I cannot do it anymore. That's it. I have to accept it. It's a phenomenon of life. I'm not 20 years old and that's it. But I don't need people to tell me, hey, what happened to you? You walk like a drunk. I'm not drunk. I just have problem to find my equilibrium. But labeling me like a drunk is sarcasm cannot accept to be like this my father didn't accept it when they wanted to put my father into uh, when the ambulance come and pick him up to bring to old people house he say why you want to put me in a wheelchair he said i can walk but the ambulance who came he said that's standard procedure 
standard procedure for you, not for me. But they treated him like a disabled. He said, I'm not disabled. I can walk. And he got angry at them. He started fighting with the ambulance who came to pick him up, to take him up to the whole house. Because these people say, standard procedure, we have to put him in a wheelchair, but he doesn't want to be in a wheelchair. So they had to attach him on the wheelchair. How do you think my father became? He became angry like crazy, shouting like a madman, confirming to them, oh, he is really senile. He has a serious problem, the old man. Well, you treat him like a prisoner, you want to attach him on a chair. He told you he can walk on himself, he can sit on himself. He can go to your ambulance by himself. And please don't forget to start the alarm. Weep, 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 weep. He never been to an ambulance of his life. Make him like a child, you know, start the noise. Weep, weep, weep. So the whole neighborhood will know, wow, Mr. Gangi is going to the ambulance. At least for him will be a nice experience. Fun, you know, I'm in an ambulance. But no, they treated him like a prisoner. Why you do this to them? Oh, because we don't want him to fall. I know you don't want him to fall, but do you respect him as a human being? No, you're not. And of course, don't don't be surprised that he became so angry and so moody, so aggressive. Next slide. Problem coping. Naturally, one of the problem is they have to cope with all these changes that's happening inside them. And of course, we know we are moving into Industry 4.0 era. Digital world is taking over. And of course, it's not easy. I remember just me to move from my normal mobile phone to this smartphone. It took me years to accept because my finger was so big when I type on this. And for me, it was not to use this. It's to understand it's a change. And I'm quite open to change and I teach change management. But sometimes technological change is so different. Things are changing too fast for them. And they don't know what to do. It's getting very, very complicated for them. And we have to understand that. And one thing that these people have problem is they don't remember the short term memory, like I mentioned. And one of the big things that many old people have is finding their keys. They don't know where they put their keys. So instead of telling them, hey, you stupid, why you don't remember you put your keys? Well, just give them a simple device. You don't know you put your keys, put them in your neck. Another problem with my father, always wait, losing his wallet. Well, that's uh, my father's wallet with a chain attached to the keys. So when you put your keys, you have your wallet with you. And get sure that the wallet is protected us. My father always had a lot of cash and he was losing cash everywhere. Going to shopping complex to buy uh, six bottles of Coca-Cola, taking $100 because his wallet was full of $100 bill. So of course, losing a lot of money. So people knew uh, Mr. Gang is around check when he opened his wallet because he was always dropping money. And they don't realize this because for him, $100 is nothing, it's just money. But we just have to help them by changing their habits from traditional wallet, a Velcro wallet that attach. And if they go regularly to the Shen Company complex, inform the cashier, he might have problem. Can you check when you open his wallet that money don't drop on the floor? And of course, providing him a wallet that is smart with a chain and keys that he will never lose because they're on his neck. And we have to help them with this. They won't do this by themselves because for them, these are gadgets. They don't need gadgets. My father was not a gadget guy, but he, he had problem. He put his things everywhere. And another problem for many of them is this. Where did I put my spec? If I want to read my slide, I have to wear my spec. Of course, that's what I was asking you before. Put my slide big so then I don't need my spec. If not, I have a side problem. Things change. I was myopy when I was young. So it means now I have two pairs of spec. One for looking far and one for looking close. So of course, where do you put your spec? Same thing. We have to help them to get organized. 
me everything is around my computer because i'm in a wheelchair so i have to accommodate two kind of disability my walking on one leg and of course my eyesight situation and my mobility so and sometimes we have to be patient with them we have to help them for that and sometimes we have to follow them we have to organize them because they get confused and they have difficulty doing simple tasks and that's it but we have to live with them we don't have to isolate them and if we live with them we have to watch them and i like this buddhist approach 80 years life more they get closer to 80 80 years old well take care of them like baby they took care of you when you were a baby now it's time for us to take care of them not to put them aside that they are a trouble many young people don't want to live with their grandparents because grandparents are smelly grandparents always repeat the same story so that's what it is to be old i've been to africa many times i love african mentality when there's an old people in a village everybody take care of the elders because for them when a the elder die it's a full life library that disappear within and because of that they take care of the elders so much the only one who have lived the past will remember the past they might not remember what they did an hour ago but they remember the past they remember years and years ago and of course storytelling they're very good at storytelling that's why i like to go to montreal to see my friend mother who according to him is terribly difficult to live with her because she always talk about when she was a young girl on the farm but that's what she remember and of course she's happy when she talk about her youth she say now it's not fun i'm in montreal i cannot go where i want i live with my son and, and she's been declared dementia like my father so she cannot even have control of her account she receive her, her retirement fund and it's her son who handle her money like my sister was in link my father money he was so angry <clears throat> why are you the one controlling my banking it's my bank account not yours yeah but you've been legally declared dementia so result i'm in charge of you you're not in charge of yourself and this make them very moody very angry but when you allow them to share what they want to share they become so happy i like talking to this old lady because very funny she come in the same area where my parents come from and when she talk about when she was young it remember me when i was young on the farm going running after the chicken running after the pig going for the cow for the milking and collecting the eggs in the morning in the poultry for breakfast removing the cream from the milk after milking the cow she liked talking about these things and me too i love because this was the most beautiful part of my life when i live on a farm life changed when i came to a city so that's why right now babe, old people become a society problem aging when they should be happy 2020 i've killed so many old people in their retirement home covid has terminated a lot of elderly people who were declared dementia who were put in these old houses poor care killed them so problem solved but baby boomer which we are in north america i'm the youngest of the baby boomer so meaning there's a lot of people 80 85 like my neighbor so very soon we're going to have 25 percent of the population of quebec above, above 65 years old so we are an aging world you're from malaysia malaysia is slowly moving into that but malaysia is not organized like here malaysia don't have a system of government retirement home i hope they will not keep what malaysia have extended family keep the children close to the old people get them involved in daily family life don't park them at home take them with you and organize their daily life organize their wallet organize their keys so that they won't lose they won't have a problem remembering where they are and if they put their t-shirt upside down help them to put it right that's it stop mentioning it living with them coping is living with them and if they don't have the intellectual capacity the cognitive capacity to solve their problem themselves this is why we are around so if we are around we can solve problems for them that's why we are young they take care of us when we were very children now it's our turn but we have to develop the patience of living with old people there's nothing wrong to be old it's a fact of life 
And I would say so much that we can say about this, but it's a fact of the Western world. Me, I'm so disappointed to witness how ageism has even became since the 70s, a fact of life, even a concept that is taught in school to young teenager in Canada. You know, they have courses on ageism. Ageism is a word that they didn't even know in 1989. What the heck is that? Now they have labeled the old people. Everybody talk about segregation, racism, discrimination. But this is discrimination for the old. Even they gave it a name. When I was young, we were calling it golden age. So golden age people were giving privilege of discounted cinema, stuff like that. But suddenly golden age has disappeared. Now it's ageism. Old people burden to society. You're a burden. You cannot function by yourself. Where is going our society? I don't know. But I think the answer is not government. The answer is each of us. If we have elder in our family, we have to take care of them. We have to get in touch with them. And we have to understand in the digital age, like right now we're doing a video conference. Many of them for this, it's impossible to even conceive that what we're doing could have been done before calling on the phone, hearing the voice, but hearing the voice and seeing the people, oh my God, this is incredible space age technology for them. We have to understand. I'm sure your parents come from like my parents from a farmhouse. There was no electricity. It was the oil lamp and the candlelight. I remember when I was a kid going to my grandmother at night, it was candlelight dinner. Not because we were having fashion high class dinner, because there was no electricity in the house. So the only thing we have in the house is candlelight dinner and oil lamp. And going to bed, what time we go to bed? Now we can go to we spend the whole night up. We have electricity, but my, during my time, by eight, nine o'clock, everybody in the house was going to bed. The candle was finished. And we don't start a new candle until tomorrow. So candle is finished, go to bed. No light in the house. What time we wake up? Sun. We wake up with the sun. Now do people wake up with the sun? They need an alarm clock. Me, I wake up with the sun. Like uh, yesterday, I noticed you went with your son on a bicycle ride and you saw three marvelous deer. Too bad for urban people who live in the city who need an alarm clock to wake up. If you wake up early in time, you were lucky to go in that trail. And my God, there were three deer. Three deer. In Toronto area, oh my God, who would believe there is deer next Toronto? Biggest city in Canada. Deer in a bicycle trail. Welcome to Canada. But if you're not a wake up early person, you miss all that. Me, I've been raised on a farm. Five o'clock, I'm going to the chicken place. I'm the one harvesting the eggs. Chicken lay egg before sunrise. And that's why we have fresh egg in the morning. People don't realize that when the chicken lay an egg, it's body temperature, it's warm. And same thing with the milk. We drink the milk from the cow in the morning. The milk is temperature of the cow. So warm milk, that's what we eat in the breakfast. We drink in the breakfast. Warm milk from the cow. Half an hour ago, it was in the body of a cow. Now it's in my cereal bowl, in my drinking glass. So unfortunately, technological world have changed who we are as human. And now it, we, now we live in an era of Gen X and Gen, Gen Z. So very high tech people. Very smart, very cognitive, very intelligent, artificially, but cannot talk to anybody without this. They are zero to make communication. They're always on the stupid mobile. Mobile was supposed to help us. Now it is replacing us. The digital world is moving people out. So that's why I like the food, the, the, the movie, you know, the Terminator. Will the robot invade the planet one day? Yes, right now. The digital world is replacing human beings. Many people, many young people prefer a digital conversation than a real conversation. <laughs> and that's why they are so tolerant for all these confinement situations. Wearing a mask, not even seeing the mouth without. We know that verbal language, the mouth expression is very important. If we wear a mask, I see your eyes, that's it. But I don't see your facial expression. But the young generation, they don't mind. They talk to a mobile. They don't talk to people. So population right now is very docile with all this confinement. Why? Because this is what the world has become less and less human, more and more digital, more and more technical. 
And of course, can you imagine the elder in that situation? All this world doesn't come from them. This was like looking at the Star Trek 50 years ago. We don't realize Star Trek is 50 years old. I remember looking at, you know, and the mobile phone of today was a Star Trek phone 50 years ago. But for us, it was science fiction. Now it is science fiction today. So can you imagine the elder? Did really people walk on the moon? Well, there are still a lot of elders who don't believe in it. The world has changed so much, so dramatically. And the problem is the world is big. And now we realize COVID is all over the world. So anything that happened in any part of the world is impacted in all the rest of the world. We're all into it. And going older is a world phenomenon. Aging population. Of course, there are a lot of people who say there's too many people, too many people in the world. So maybe old people should die. And the other way to reduce world population, stop making baby. But it's okay. Mobile phone will replace the pleasure very soon. Put some electrode in your mind and imagine you're doing it. But we have to understand old people, they come from another era. And when we talk about people right now, we talk about people who have experienced World War II era, the post-World War II. Baby boomer are post-World War II and post-World War II. I lost one uncle in World War II in my family. We were lucky people were too young. But all my cousin, my nephew, I just lost a cousin 60 years old, 68 years old, two weeks ago. He was my best cousin when I lived in the country. Now I lost my cousin. He died of cancer. And of course, aging is a reality of the world. So what should happen? Should all of us above 65 should withdraw from society? We have no right to live anyway. But we have to understand there are people 20 years older than that. And dementia is a reality. But we know one thing, the brain, the nervous system has a plasticity. So neuron can stop disconnecting, but we can create new ones. The brain is not matter. The brain is plasticity. It can evolve. It can still change. Of course, if we base on age technology, artificial intelligence, elder people live more in the present. And for them, the present is back to the basic senses, touching, smelling, tasting, looking, hearing. So going back to simplicity of life instead of complexity of life. Simplicity is the name of the game. Uh, these people were used the invention of the telephone. They were used to dial a phone. Now you just talk to the phone. And now you can even look in the camera. We have to understand that for, for many of them, this is too much. They are not ready for that. They still need someone sitting at the table with them. Still need someone to look at still need someone to share and discuss and exchange. They still need the warmth of human contact. And they get disorganized. They don't remember things. So what? We have to be their memory. They lost their memory. We have to be their memory. They disorganize. We have to help them organize. We have to make their life easy. And we have to realize they have serious issues. And of course, at certain age, Driving a car is becoming difficult because of their eyesight. It's not because they cannot drive. Their body remember to drive, but their eyesight is not as sharp. They don't react at the same speed. Sometimes it takes them two, three seconds to react. And because of that, they are prone to accident. But young people drive and always own at these old people who drive too slow. Stop owning at the old people. Understand why they drive slow because they know that they can be a danger to you and to themselves if they drive fast. We have to understand. We have to put ourselves in their shoes. That's what we call empathy. We have to be empathetic. Put yourself yourself in their shoes. Me, I knew I was a dancer. You were a taekwondo. My God, you were so agile when you were 20, 25 years old. Of course, can we expect you at 50 plus to be as agile? You're still very fit. I still watch your taekwondo skills. But of course, you won't do what I saw you doing years and years ago. And it's normal. We have to accept the reality. Our body change. 
we are not as skilled as we were. And some basic thing, we cannot do it anymore. That's it. That's life. I used to be knitting myself. Now I bring it to a tailor to do it. Yeah, my clumsy finger cannot do this anymore. It's not because I cannot do it. My eyesight make it difficult to find it out to put this in the needle. And it's okay. And I'm still clever and I'm still intelligent and I'm still creative and I'm still this. But I have to accept that the body I live in is not me. I live in this body and this body is aging. That's it. Reality of life. This body is aging. It's not moving as it used to move. And that's why some old people have difficulty. But the nervous system, the problem is we always think of cognitive, the thinking brain. Thinking brain is what we have inside our skull. But we have three brains. We have the emotional brain. Old people have emotion. And I know when I talk to the mother of my friend at 84 years old, when she talked about when she was a kid on the farm, you should see the face of that lady It change. You see the young girl in her waking up. You see the happiness. And that's most important. We have to f never forget the emotional brain. If we always talk to the cognitive brain, the, the brain in the, in the head, we are not a brain in the head, we are a nervous system. And we have also the guts. So of course, many people don't realize that. Most old people don't breathe as young. The vital capacity of the lung decrease with age. The blood circulation capacity of the blood vessel decrease with age. And of course, you can go to get medicine for that medication, but we should go back to basic breathing technique. Of course, I'm a breathologist. I preach my own medicine. We have to teach people to be diaphragm breathing. But to diaphragm breathing, you have to reduce that tummy. You have to learn to eat less. You must have a digestive tract that is empty of food. Most people are used in Canada to eat too much, big meals. And they have a mentality, French Canadian, mangeons bien, nous mourons gras, eat well and die fat. So it's like the happy Buddha in Asia. Fat people are happy people, they are prosperous. But the big tummy prevent the diaphragm to go down, we, we inhale. So as we grow older, people lose the diaphragm capacity. That's why when they got they go to intensive care, they put them on, on breathing device because the lung have no capacity to absorb air. The lung have regress, they become smaller. We should work more on doing breathing exercise with elder people, expanding the chest, moving the chest, the rib cage, but mostly the digestive tract. We should feed them less so that they can breathe more belly breathing, Buddhist breathing style. Big belly, not be a belly, but breathing belly. Inhale through your tummy first, so that you have more air for each inhalation. And most people hyperventilate. When they get moody, they get angry. When they get angry, they... <laughs> this is hyperventilation. They exhale too much CO2. And CO2 is the key for oxygen. If there is no CO2 in the blood, oxygen doesn't go through. Hyperventilation prevent people to absorb oxygen. Slow breathing, deep breathing, increase capacity of CO2. We call it hypoxia. Hypoxia is this is when the cell can absorb oxygen. When there is a deprivation of oxygen at the cell level, that's when the O2 from the blood go to the cell. But of course, can we help the old people to take a deep breath, bite tummy? So instead of telling them they don't remember where they put their keys and they, they cooked the egg three times this morning, can we just help them? Can you sit down and breathe with me? We can breathe with them. One breath at a time. We have 30,000 times a day to breathe. And by helping them breathing, we help them to calm down, to be less moody. And if they calm down, they can be slowly see whatever it is and instead of withdrawing from us they will still want to be with us but we have to be with them the problem is young people don't want to be with old people now young people in Montreal they manifest because of the curfew after eight o'clock they want to go to school they want to go to the bar they want to go to the pub why don't you stay home with your elder 
Young people want to be with young people. And of course, how they organize? Through the social media. They organize big manifestation on social media. Nobody is an organizer, but you just need someone to put on Facebook. We're meeting at that place at 2 o'clock on Saturday. Bingo. They find themselves 15,000 of them there. Because this is how they relate with people. On social media, not real. Relate with real people. And real people as the people living with you. And the closest is your family, your friend, your neighbors. I'm happy since I'm back in Malaysia. And Malaysia was living in a condominium on the 13th floor of a building. Uh, my son and I live all his life in a, in a condominium. Now he's going to school with his friends here. And now we live in the countryside in a small house. You know, you've been here. So at least my neighbor is always there. And my neighbor like to be out in the morning and the lady on the other side always out. So never alone. So get out of the house, meet people, talk to people. This was the basic life on earth when I was a kid. My parents took me to the city, took me away from the real life. Living on a farm was the real life for me. And now I'm not living in a farm, I'm back on the countryside. And I can still talk to you, Sarah, and I can still talk to my friend in Malaysia. And luckily for me, I adapt to new technology. And luckily for you, you're moving your program digital. I'm moving my mental training program digital very soon. I'm working on it. But not all the old people are ready to make these shift. We have to understand their life has changed. And the cognitive function disappear with age. And that's the problem of dementia. And I think we can help them to cope with it, to prevent it more difficult. To cope with it and coping with it is just looking at these symptoms of uh, that i just shared and through these symptoms we can help them building up strategies the strategy is living day by day rotating thing rotating the dishes rotating the food in the fridge organizing schedule writing schedule on the wall putting on the fridge so we can help them organizing themselves because their brain have lost this function and we have to understand if they have no short-term memory, but well, we have to replace short-term memory by short-term activities to get sure that they build up this habit. So old monkey learn new trick, but it takes time. And we just have to give them time. And that's my sharing with you this morning about dementia, which I am surrounded with, in which I witness in my family, and aging of population. People of my age are aging. I like it or not, all the people I used to go to university are old, old people. I was the youngest in my school at university. So all my friends are in their 80s. And that's it. That's life. We live with it. We accept it. So thank you so much for sharing. Uh, are you going to accept questions? Pardon me? <laughs> are you going to accept questions, Q&A? Yes, so yes, Q &A yes, yes, definitely. Time. Question is, would you mind sharing about the differences between the Alzheimer and dementia? I like talking about it. It's a fact of life since I'm back in Quebec. Like I told you, in Asia, nobody talk about that. But when I came here, it's a talk of every day. And now with COVID, they always talk about elder people and CHSLD and all these things. Here, it's a phenomenon. Here, they, they made aging a disease. And they put old people in these old houses, people's house. For me, it's like, why have they done this? I don't know what happened. What happened in Quebec in 30 years? Why ageism is becoming a fact of life? Why they teach this to college, to students? And the students are very arrogant. I'm experiencing it when I go to bank. Because now banking is all digital, online, online. So sometimes I want to do things online and it doesn't work. So I go to the branch. And the lady who talked to me, 25 years old, and she's very sarcastic. It's all online. I tried, doesn't work. That's why I come here. She said, but you have to go back online. I say, but you have a computer, go online for me. And she get, but you can do it in your house. I say, I come here to talk to you in face to face. Why you tell me I can do it on the computer? I come here because I tried on the computer. I come here because I want you to clarify how it works. And she get pissed off. You have to learn. I say, hey, I'm learning. That's why I'm here talking to you. But it's like talking to her is disturbing. Call me. 
call you. I'm in front of you. Why should I call you? I'm in front of you. So I'm experiencing it since I'm here. Now in Canada, everything is online. COVID, you have to book yourself. I know friends who want to get their vaccine. They cannot get the line. And when they get it, they get confused. And then they tell them online, go on the web. Then they go on the web and they see all these calendars. And they don't understand where to push to pick up the time and the date where they're going to get their vaccine and where to get it. Now in Montreal, vaccine center are empty. And now they get angry. People don't get vaccinated. They complain there was no vaccine. Now we have vaccine. They don't come. But if they come, you send them away. You tell them you have to register yourself on the web. They come by face. They're in front of you. Why you don't take them there? We are becoming in a world, a young generation is a digital generation. They don't like to talk to people. That young lady at the bank, she was so pissed off because I asked her what she said I could do online. But when I tried to explain why I come here, because I want you to help me. I know how to go online, but it doesn't work. Too many words, too many A, B, C, D. This is the cognitive world. I'm an holistic person. I'm a global person. I'm a three-dimensional person. I'm a dancer. I think in space. I don't think in step one, step two, step three. I used to do dancing based on the feeling, the emotion of music. But I know a friend who could dance based on the note of music. This is the cognitive part, the logical part. I'm not a logical dancer. I was an emotional dancer. I was an improvisator. My life is improvisation. Uh, I'm a, I'm a user-friendly type of approach. Touch and go. But now it's becoming complex. You have to go step one, step two. And it's very analytical. And the young generation is very analytical. They all talk a language of coding and everything. They talk about computer. I say, hey, don't tell me about computer. I am at the beginning of the era of computer. I learned when we were punching cards a computer. I learned Fortran, Cobol, and Pascal. Very complex computer language. Now everything is coding. And even I do algorithm in the 1970. Now everything is algorithm and they say, oh, it's an algorithm. I even ask them, do you know what is an algorithm? They don't even know what is an algorithm, how to make an algorithm. I say, well, at least I know that's in the 70s. And now the world is, is made based on algorithm. So nothing is human touch. And, and I would say, talking about dementia, don't be surprised when people get cognitively cacou. It's too much. It's too much transformation from the normal digital world to the analog world we're coming from. Analog world is analog. And I know one thing, digital clock. Your phone has a clock. But some people, they need a clock with a needle. This is how they learn to read the time. And the day they need to see Monday, dang, dang. But now in a digital world, everything is numbers. Number, point, uh, dot, number, dot, number, dot. But these people come from an analog world. We have to understand we have moved too fast into a digital world that fit very much the people who are 20, 25, 30 years old. But what about the people who are 85? This is such a big step for them. And it's, you know, the big difference, analog compared to digital. Analog is analog. You know, anywhere in the world, if I say hi, what does that mean? And this is analog language. Hi. I went to the Eskimo. Middle, you know, of the north of Canada, you go to the Eskimo. Nunavut, you say hi, they will answer to you, hi. It's analog language all over the world. I went to Lapland in Sweden, northern Sweden, the Lap people with the reindeer. And when you go to Lapland, you say, hi. What do you think they say? Hi. This is analog language. But when we speak English, French, or German, or Hokkien, or Hakka, or Fuchao, this is digital. Each language is a digital, digital, blah, 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 digitalization of communication. Why children from different languages and races can play together? Children are at the analog level. Children speaking different language will play together. You see, how can they play together? They don't even speak the same language. They don't need. Because children understand the analog language. Analog language is body language plus sound plus emotion. Children understand that. But with the year, we tell them, uh, 
là, il a qu'un Québec. In Québec en français seulement. In French only. My son is a Canadian born in Asia. 13 years of his life. He came here. They refused him to go to an English school. They treat him as an immigrant. In Québec, he must study in French. Now he's studying French. So since September, he's in a French school. He has no choice. The teacher speaks only French. He speaks only English. Do they care about him? Not at all. This is where the, we are, the digital world. You have to adapt to the world because we will not adapt the world to you. And dementia, we have to adapt to the people or the people should adapt. The world has changed too fast, so many elder people. It's going too fast. I know in Malaysia, problem in Malaysia is Wi-Fi. 30 million people, most people don't have internet. How can we want Malaysian to be 2D in the world when they don't have the basic digital technology? At least in Canada, we have 5G. Everywhere now we can have 5G communication. We have one of the best, you know, internet system in the world. So we can have high quality technology 24 seven without interruption. But not the whole world is like this, go to Africa. Many villages still no electricity. What world are we putting these people in the modern world? The modern world, the Western world is digitalizing. And we know 5G technology, very advanced in China, but the Western world is closing the door to China technology. But I'm happy I'm back in Canada and I'm a, you know, I have action from Bell. I believe in Bell and Bell is 5G. So already 5G technology available in Canada, but they complain about UAE, blah, 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 blah. So is it bad to talk about dementia? Have we increased dementia by moving too fast in technology? By telling young people, oh, they are old people. They are old people. Put them in old people house. Don't take care of your elder. We take care of them. Of course, it is the business of the old people. How many people make a fortune right now? It's COVID time. Who benefit? Everybody complained that the hospital are overcharged, that the doctors are tired, that the nurses are tired. Well, how many millions of people have lost their job during COVID? Who benefit from COVID right now as a job? The people in the health industry. And many of them do overtime. I know most people who work, they will, they would pray to do overtime, make more money. So now the people in the health services are making more money than average Canadian. And they are complaining of overworking. Many people would like to work like this. Now in Quebec, they're trying to recruit anybody who wants to become first responder. Now they're opening their job to non-qualified people because there's not enough people. But the pay is damn good. $70 an hour for a nurse to go to a house to take care of an old person. $70 an hour. Is this a good paycheck in the modern world? It's a damn good paycheck. But they complain. But they are the beneficiary of the pandemic. And of course, we don't talk about pharmacy company, test, and all these kind of things. And all these conspiracy going on. Are we being in the biggest oak of the century or of humanity so far? Or whatever. Dementia is a reality, in my opinion, of the Western world. I hope it will not touch Africa, it will not touch India, it will not touch Malaysia. Because I'm happy to have witnessed there that old people are not segregated. Old people are part of family. And they keep close to their old people. And I hope it will stay like this. I hope that the young people won't follow the digital trend of the world. Old people is a burden for the young. We don't have time to take care of the old people. We have to live our life. That's why they agreed to send their parent into old house. That's where they died. But nobody's complaining why the care services are so poor in the older house. Nobody complain about it. I don't understand the young population. Do we see reality or they believe whatever we tell them? Right now they follow the herd. It's a herd mentality. They just follow the pack. And of course, the only news that is the real news is the government news. 
what I share and I can share some things I know because I have friends all over the world. I can share news I got from friends. Of course, they will call this fake news. Is this documented? Well, I have access to information that people here don't have access to. Because here, the only access is the official network of information. And dementia is an accepted fact, at least in Quebec. I don't know why it is in Ontario, but here it's a fact. Dementia is a fact of life. And if you have, you can identify an elder that look at all the symptoms I was sharing. If any one of these symptoms are present in an elder you know, report it. They will automatically label them as dementia. And in many cases, they will take away all their rights. And they will name a tutor taking care of their finance, their house, their retirement, their everything. So suddenly they lose control of their own life like they did to my father. And my father, one year after entering the old people's house, he died. He died of what? Moody, desperate, totally isolated. He was a social animal coming from a small village. My father needed to talk to people daily. Daily he liked to drive his car, go to the petrol station, to talk with the men who sit at the petrol station. Yak, 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 yak. Malaysia, they will call it a copitiam discussion. And old people in Malaysia, they go to coffee shops. And they will spend the whole day solving the problem of the world of the coffee shop. But this is social life. Right now in Malaysia, they cannot do it anymore. We are killing the lifestyle of the whole people. Why are we doing this to them? Have they done anything to us? No. But we're doing this to them. We are depriving them of their right to live an happy old life. And that's why I see an old person, we have to take care of them. That's why me and my in my neighborhood, we the only old person is the lady next door on the other side of the road, 84 years old, and I told my son, don't be afraid to go and ask her, can, can I do something for you today? She will teach you a lot of things. And she's so active. And of course, she is witnessing all her friends, her sisters and brother are died, her husband died. They all died of old age, and many of them died like my father in our retirement home. And of course, don't talk to her about, will you go to an old people's house? Never. They would have to do like they did to my father to come and pick her up. She would never go by herself. And the only thing she expects, she has a son and a, and a daughter who are in their 40s. She just hoped that they will help her to stay in her house until she passed away. My grandfather died at 94 years old, living alone in his house, 94 years old. And he was crippled walking with a cane. But 94 years old, living alone. And of course, nobody was concerned what happened to him living alone at that age. Because everybody was seeing him on a daily basis, doing to his activity, going back, talking to people, walking the village, where I come from, a small town, small village. But my grandfather, 94 daily, daily, and they knew he was dead the day they didn't saw him coming down the hill. They say, well, evangelist that it came down the hill, what happened? Something must have happened. Then someone went to his house and they found him dead in his bed. And that's the way he wanted to die, peacefully in his thing, in his life. But we have to allow them to a peaceful death and to be surrounded by the loved one. We should not stop going away from them because they always repeat the same story like my friend is doing with his mother right now. She wants to talk to people, but nobody wants to listen to her. She likes when I go there because I listen to her. Because what she talk about, I can relate. I was a young kid when she, she was in her 20s. So we can share the same experience in the farm area. We have to enjoy the old people. I like the African. They always sit the children around the elder. Elder like to tell stories, stories of hunting, theories of going into the jungle. And you see this in Sarawak. I went to Bidayu villages, Dayak, same thing. I went to a village. I thought the chief of the village was a guy in his 50s. And at 3 in the morning, I discovered that in the house, there was a man barely naked, full of tattoos, because we had a big party with Westerner having a Swedish group down there. And he was putting the blood of a chicken over the skull in the roof of the house in Sarawak. And of course I discovered he was the elder of the village. He was the real chief of the village. We never saw him until then. 
But in the middle of the night, he was there to feed the skull of, of the dead that were in the house, the spirit of the dead. And I spent the whole night with that old man. And he teach me that all the tattoo he had on his body were like stamp in a passport. This tattoo come from that part of Kalimantan. This tattoo from that village. This tattoo, I nearly lost my life. And they say, how do you know he told you that? You don't speak Dayak. And he doesn't speak English. So I don't know. I spent the whole night with him. And I could relate with him. I say he was speaking like me and an analog language, a sign language, a sound language, a physical language. And I could understand the story he was telling me because when I saw his son the next morning and I told him, your father told me this, told me that, told me that. And I say, and he said, but how do you know that? I say, your father told me. Say, he cannot have told you. He only speak Dayak. Sorry, I don't speak Dayak. What can I do? But these people are real. And of course, he told me a story of Kalimantan in the time in the time of the White Raja and everything. So this is, of course, the story of Borneo. That's why for me, I have a high respect for old people. When I was young, in my house was my great grandfather. He was a six foot two man. My grandfather was five feet four, about my size. But my great grandfather was a giant. And I still remember my great grandfather. And now I become, I can tell a story about my great grandfather that he told me when I was five years old. And they're going to say, Michelle, you're becoming dementia. You remember things when you were five years old. Yes, so. And I still remember what time I wake up this morning to talk to Sarah Chong. So, may yeah, I have only one right. suggestion to people. If you're surrounded by elder, be happy. Appreciate the blessing you have. And it's a library. I like the African proverb. An old person is a library. Go and read the books in the library. Ask them to tell you stories about when they went to school, to this, to that, to that. They will tell you. They have so many to share. Short-term memory, zero. Who cares about what you did this morning? Or what they did 40 years ago, my God. 